How was Saint Winifred martyred? Was she really resurrected from the dead? And the Latin phrase, Deus providebit. What does it mean? Who was the biblical figure that pronounced it? And what is the lesson that we can take from today's story? Watch until the end to find out. Seventh century, county of Flintshire, the country of Wales. A land embellished by God with rolling hills, many valleys, woods, and lively rivers. By the birth of Winifred, the virgin and martyr, who we celebrate today, Christianity had already deeply penetrated the souls of its inhabitants. We're in a time of great miracles, and the story of Winifred's martyrdom is one of them, taking on even legendary proportions. Some argue that it was only a fib, others that it was made up. But faith in the miraculous spring, the many cures that occurred throughout the centuries, at the site of her martyrdom, down to this present day, convince us that the story is true. So who was Winifred? What was the miracle? She was a normal girl, endowed with a keen intelligence, many natural qualities, a very sensible way of being. And it is told that when she was only 15 years old, a Welsh prince named Caradoc went to her house when she was all alone, and asked her to marry him. Her parents had already left and were on their way to Mass. But Winifred was resolute in dedicating her life to God as a nun, and she was not going to let anything stop her from doing so. So naturally, she refused the prince's offer. Under the guidance of her uncle St. Piuno, who lived as a solitary close by, she was making rapid progress in holiness. She had the custom of attending his masses, and with her parents' consent, she was already preparing her consecration to God as a nun. She would often keep vigil at the chapel for entire nights at a time. She was an example of recollection, prayer, and above all, the great virtue of integrity. On the other hand, full of pride and resentful of Winifred's decision, Caradoc, far from accepting it and rejecting God's will, started to react with threats. He, we can imagine him in his anger, what he must have said, his horrible facial expressions, his complete outrage. Winifred naturally in alarm, but full of confidence that a solution would come from heaven. She rushed quickly to the chapel where her uncle had already began celebrating Mass. The prince followed. Certainly many times she would look over his shoulders to see if he was gaining distance. What prayers and supplications, what, what offerings she must have made during, during her rush to the church, only God knows. But it is certain that as she was running, she was still always full of confidence and trust that in some way God would intervene. Just as she reached the church's threshold, Caradoc finally drew near. He took out his sword, and in one large gulp, he instantly separated her head from her body and her vocation as a nun. Was it not to be fulfilled? An angel had held the hand of Abraham when he was about to immolate Isaac. Could not God have also sent an angel to halt Caradoc's arm as well? Her head fell. Her body tumbled over, and on the site, a stream of water miraculously burst forth from the ground where she had recently been slain. This river has been flowing ever since. The region was once called Dry Valley. Afterwards, it received the name Winifred's Well, naturally, and nowadays it is called Holy Well. Now, having witnessed the cowardly murder, Saint Biuno, who was celebrating Mass, did not stop the holy sacrifice, but he simply withdrew for a few minutes. He went over to his niece's body. He picked up her head, already wet by the spring waters, 
and he laid it next to the body and he covered it with a mantle. He finished Mass. Afterwards, he returned to the martyr's corpse once again. This time, kneeling beside it, he prayed fervently. Then, in a great act of faith, he ordered the mantle to be removed. A great miracle was revealed. The head of his niece was back on the virgin's shoulders. Only a faint mark around her neck was visible. The young girl opened her eyes as if waking from a dream. She got up. She had been resurrected by her uncle. However, the story doesn't end here. The murderous Caradoc was not impressed with the supernatural wonder that God had worked, and he only grew in hatred. There he was on his feet, leaning on his blood-stained sword with such brashness that a new attack was feared, not only against the saint herself, but also against all of her family members and even against the priest, St. Biuno, her uncle. In view of his hardness of heart, St. Biuno instantly invoked God's punishment, and Caradoc fell down as if struck by lightning. St. Winifred ended up becoming a nun and lived many years after her miraculous resurrection. Today her well is known as the Lords of Wales, and it is a fully active holy well that has worked many miracles throughout history. And for us, what does all of this signify? What lesson can we take from Winifred's story? The importance of integrity. God loves those who are integrate, who are upright, who trust in Him. How many times we see ourselves in a jam, in a situation that seems to have no solution, or that we never expected would happen to us. Something that maybe could contradict our hopes or what we wanted to happen. Deus providebit, God will provide. When Abraham and Isaac were climbing the mountain, Isaac asked, Father, we have the wood, but where is the animal for the sacrifice? Deus providebit, God will provide, was his father's only response. What faith, what trust, what integrity Abraham had. May St. Winifred grant us this immense grace of integrity and also the certainty that God never abandons anyone, no matter what the circumstances may be. Deus providebit, God will provide. Salve Maria. If you like this video, press the like button and leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any of our videos.